Whether you call it SHTF, the end of the world as we know it, or austere times, whatever. One of the key aspects of survival is maximizing how we utilize our food resources. Historically, there's a way that that's done, and it's kind of fallen out of favor in recent years. Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to Grumpy Acres. Like I said, maximizing our food resources is a key component of survival. It doesn't do us any good to gather all this food together if we're not utilizing it to its utmost. And that's what this video is about. But before we go on, if you're new to the channel, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button because it does two things. Number one, it allows you to join our virtual community that we're, we're creating here and it helps support our channel. The second thing is it lets YouTube know that this is the type of content that you like seeing. And as a result, it will push it out to more and more people. And it's not just our content, it's content like ours. So you're, you're if you if you believe in being prepared or you believe in homesteading and this is the type of content that you want to see you need to do that so it gets pushed out to more and more people all right now back onto the topic in the post world war ii era protein has become readily available in america prior to world war ii even in the best of times most people could only put protein on their table two maybe three times a week even people that were very wealthy were probably only eating it five times a week after world war ii with the increases in agriculture and and the ability to raise uh, feedstock for the animals protein became more and more available and as a result americans kind of take it for granted that we have the ability to get it on a regular basis there are other parts of the world where not being able to get protein is still a thing. And historically, it is one of the hardest things to procure for the menu. This whole topic rises out of a side project that I've got going on, where I'm trying to find recipes that will help people during austere times. Recipes that come from the 1700s and 1800s and even the Great Depression that utilize stuff that is local. Because if, if what we believe is going to happen, happens, we're not going to be getting our food from 1,600 miles away to get it to the table. We're going to be eating very local. So all that stuff that we're, we're so used to having, the Brazilian meat, all the spices that come from the Far East, they're not going to be there. So we have to learn how to cook local. So what I've been doing is I've been going through old cookbooks like this one, the Complete, uh, the complete Housewife. This is a 1700s cookbook that has a menu in it that is based on what could be procured locally there and I've got a uh, PDF of an old military culinary manual and one of the things that I'm noticing in a lot of these recipes it calls for boiling the meat now and historically that's been a technique that has been used to get the most out of your resources okay how does it do that the first thing boiling meat uses your heating resources much more thoroughly whenever you're cooking over an open fire a lot of that heat and energy is dissipated out in radiant heat when you boil meat all that heat not all of it but most of it goes into the pot and is used to boil the water which in, in turn cooks the meat the second thing it does is it allows us to capture more of the nutrients from the meat as the meat boils the nutrients will come out and they'll go into the water whereas when you're cooking over an open fire the heat and the fire literally destroys the nutrient content of the meat so you capture all that meat and it can it can either be drank right then and there so you ingest all that nutrient all those nutrients or it's saved up and used as some sort of stock like we do here at grumpy acres and there's a third thing it does too it it allows us to use cuts of meat that are extremely hard to get the the meat out of like feet necks tails things like that and a lot of the recipes in this book what they what they do is they call for a half boil which means you're you're only partially cooking the meat in the boiling water you're still capturing all those nutrients and then you pull it out you separate the meat or cut it up 
and you, you brown it in a frying pan with some sort of fat, butter, tallow, lard, whatever. And then that, that stock is set aside and used for uh, future recipes. Now, like I said, this is something that's fallen out of favor in, in everyday cooking because of the ready availability of meat. It's going to become harder to get, folks. I, I hate to be hate to be a black pillar on this subject, but the numbers are not lying. The, in light of everything we've talked about, you know, capturing all the extra the nutrients that are lost, uh, the uh, using more cuts of meat. Here's my challenge to you: go out and and at the very least think about boiling meat. Give it a try. Learn how to do it. Like any other thing. It's a culinary skill that has to be perfected, and the only way you perfect it is by doing it. And it's better to do it now when you're not starving than to try to do it when you're starving and your life may depend on it because you're going to have failures. And if you have a failure now, you've still got the ability to recover and it's not a life-threatening event, whereas if you wait till later, it very well could be. If you got any thoughts on, on boiling meat, go ahead and comment down below if you, if you do it. Let us know. Share your experience with us. That's what this channel is all about, is sharing experiences. Right. Hit that notification bell and let YouTube know that you want to know whenever more content like this comes out. Most of all, like I always say, go out and pursue a life done free. Okay, folks. Take care. Thanks, Milo.